Hello and welcome to this video. Um, the topic for today is to create a simple slab and run the analysis and design. Uh, we will have a look into almost six topics. We'll check the material, create a system, do the loading, run a linear analysis, have a brief check about the load combinations and superpositioning, and at the end we will do the design to get out the required reinforcement for our 2D slab. Okay, so let's get started. Um, just open Sophistic Tri Scroll Desktop 2018 and create a new project. Within the system information dialog, you need to set up your information about the project name and therefore I enter 2D slab design. Uh, we'll select as well the British standard for this analysis and leave this as it is, so keep the default. And I check as well the system information here. As I mentioned at the beginning, I would like to do a 2D slab. We need to ensure that the 2D slab option is selected here. It should be on default, however, always check this one. Furthermore, I would like to point out the pre-processing tool we are going to use. It's Sophie Plus and this is based on AutoCAD for the graphical pre-processing. Everything else I will leave it as it is and I hit on OK. Now we are in Sophistic Structural Desktop. On the left hand side you see the project tree. Within the project tree we have all the needed chapters we need to go through to run our project successfully. The first uh, uh, pro um, chapter is the system, the second linear analysis and design are elements. Of course you can create those chapters by yourself but create an insert a new group or of course insert specific tasks you might need. However, let's have a look here at the materials at the beginning. At the materials here, I simply double click on material number one, just to show you how it, how you can modify uh, a predefined material. So in our case, we have here the default of C25. I would like to switch to C30 here. So you see it's already amended in the input. Click on OK and I have now C37. Uh, I will leave the, uh, the reinforcement material as it is here. Uh, cross sections as we are creating a 2D slab here we don't need to do anything uh, or need to set up specific cross sections so we can skip this completely for today. The next task is already the graphic user interface for create your structure and as we selected at the beginning in the system information dialog box it's Sophie Plus so double click on this one. You see here it's um, Sofa Plus is open based on AutoCAD and we can have a look on the side. We have this uh, sidebar which brings all the needed commands to transfer your maybe already existing wireframe of your structure in AutoCAD or to create new elements and loads. Um, to keep it simple I will use straightforward this uh, rectangle command from AutoCAD so I hit on this one and I'm getting asked for my first corner point and I set it straight forward to my origin. The next thing I simply hit on dimensions, enter for my length 6000 millimeters because for the British standard template the default for the input is millimeters and for my width I use as well 3000 millimeters. Then I bring it to the right uh, position and click on the left mouse button. Scroll a little bit in. Okay. And the next step is, because this is just a simple AutoCAD line, we need to transfer this AutoCAD line in the Sophistic Structural Element to use it afterwards for the export. Therefore, I head straight forward to the Structural Element tab here. And you see we have three Structural Elements. It's Point, Line and Area. And I go for the Structural Area. So open this one. Um, the first step here is the Channel tab. Um, here you can set up, as it says, general informations, for instance, select a different material if you like, or what I will do, and simply change the thickness of my structural area. Um, what I also like to do is to create or control the meshing behavior. Therefore, I go to the meshing tab and tick the box control of meshing, because I would like to generate a Revlon grid in that case. Um, to assign all this information of this um, structural area dialog box, I go with uh, my cursor within the structural area, for instance, or elsewhere in the model space, use the right click 
and I get several options to create my um, boundaries from my structural area. Uh, in my case, I'm going with the point in area um, command because as I have already a closed boundary condition, I can simply just pick into this area and Sophistic will locate my boundary automatically. So I go with point in area, go within my structural uh, boundaries, hit on the left mouse button and what I get uh, is an additional dialog box which allows me to set up straightforward uh, two load cases, load case one and load case two. Um, load case one here is my dead load case and this is not the self-weight or dead load as itself, it's more an additional dead load, so for instance for my flooring. So I use two kilonewton per square meter. If we like to, and of course we would like to do this, uh, assign uh, as well the self-weight for our structure, we need to do this within the load tab on the left in the load manager. I will do this in a second. Um, the second load case is the life load and I enter here as well 3 kN per square meter. Everything is fine for me and I hit on OK. So now we get a blue boundary here. So we see this is a structural area. We got a name, a number and information about our used load cases. So I simply click on escape to close everything because I'm done so far. Um, now we have a simply slab, but we need of course some support conditions and therefore we are going to use the line command. And you see here, it's already here in the support conditions tab. Um, as we are using here a 2D system, we have not all options available, what makes sense. The only uh, global information, for instance, we can activate is the PZZ and I will do this straightforward click on this one and I start by heading over my left top corner, use the object snap to start with the first point, go downwards to my second point and it creates me uh, the structural line including the information about my support conditions. So I would like to do the same here on the right hand side, if I use the right click and select the single element mode and start at the top at the end. When I'm done, simply hit the escape button. Okay, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, when entering the information about the load cases here, this is two kilonewton per square meter for my first load case, what represents a dead load, uh, it doesn't consider here the self-weight. To consider the self-weight, we need to go to this load tabs and therefore on the top we have the load case manager. I open this one and you get an overview about all defined load cases. In our case, the program defined load case number one and two by open up this uh, dialog box where we set up load case number one and two. If you want to create a new load case, feel free to do this here, the new button. But what important is because we need to consider as well the self-weight in our example meter, allocate the factor one uh, to consider the self-weight. Um, this means 100% of the self-weight are going to be considered for your design and of course your analysis. So I'm fine here with this, everything I'll leave as it is click on OK. Good. The next step is quite simple. We need to export our structure to the database. So I go to the left top on my sidebar and hit the export button. I leave everything as it here. Just a few words on the top. You can measure partial systems. So you can activate this one and select objects. You can switch on off or switch between quad and triangle elements or you can as well do some mesh density modifications if you want. I'll leave everything as it is, simply hit on OK. Now the export starts and you see it just takes a few seconds and all the information was written in the database. The next step is simply go straight forward back to my Sophistic Structural Desktop and what you see here is already our system with a 6 meter length, 3 meter width and a regular mesh. It looks good so far. Good. The next step is uh, the linear analysis, load combinations, and superpositioning. Um, the first thing I'd like to show is uh, the define combination task, because this, is, uh, this task is responsible to generate uh, your rules or to define your rules, what are going to be used afterwards for superpositioning. And simply double click on this one, and you see on the left hand side all available, or at the moment, available uh, combination rules, which are already inserted by default based on your selected code. If you want, you can modify those or you can simply add or delete one. I'm happy with them, so I click on OK. 
Uh, to run the superposition and get, of course, design results, we need to run a linear analysis before. And the linear analysis runs that you find single load cases, load case number one and two, as you remember. Uh, there are as well some possibilities to say that, however, this is uh, not necessary for this simple example. I simply click on OK and it runs my linear analysis, so that looks good. Uh, to run the superpositioning, uh, simply click, uh, double click here as well. And you see already uh, it opens again the superposition menu as before with the defined combination task. However, uh, it's now accessing the superposition tab here. Uh, you see again all the defined combination rules as before. And you get additional information. For instance, I'm going to do a former combination rule 104. Uh, uh, run the superpositioning for rare elements, force and forces, and all available results. So uh, here again, you can remove, add, modify your superposition uh, in the way you like. Uh, I will just leave it as it is and click on OK. Good, perfect. So let's do a brief check of our results. So you see we have results for load case number one and load case number two. I will just go for an amplitude of 50 and stop the system and just to show the difference about the results. Good. Um, the last step is to run the design of your R elements. When it comes to R elements, please keep in mind it is necessary to assign specific information for your reinforcement for your quad elements because at the moment there's no information at all for the quad elements. So therefore we need to go with the design parameters of our element task. Double click on this one. And the first tab here, the common tab, shows you uh, the general information about all different groups for your reinforcement. So the default line is remaining groups. That means in that case, each group of my example will get a two layer type, so orthogonal uh, distribution. There is as well available uh, two layers uh, but not orthogonal, three layers or circular, and as well some direction and distance information of your rebars. In that case, we have the orientations to the principal direction, so the main direction, and the distance to the edge of your first layer from the top and the second layer. Furthermore, you can also set up some information about the diameter, minimum reinforcement, or maximum reinforcement. However, I will keep this in default and simply click on OK. Now the information from this graphic user the task is written into the database and assigned to each quad element. Um, and then that brings me already to the design ULS task. The first tab here, the general tab, shows you all available design load cases and selected by entering all the load cases uh, what are going to be considered. And there are as well some possibility for shear reinforcement, control parameters, text output and graphical output. And especially if it comes to 2D system, it, is, it definitely makes sense to do uh, or to have a look in this graphical output uh, because it's quite useful to get a first idea about the results without starting ring graph and set up by um, yourself. So just keep in mind, if it comes to 2D system, this might be a quite fuel uh, feature to use. Um, okay, I'll leave it as it is and simply click on OK. <coughs> Good, the next step is just to check the results within the report. And therefore I had simply click on uh, right click and activate the reports. And if I scroll down, I get a lot of information about the result, but as well my graphics. And as I said, especially for 2D system, this is quite useful to use. And for instance, we have here the principal reinforcement. It means the main reinforcement in the first layer, in the bottom layer. Um, in the horizontal direction, um, I can check this here by this little help icon. It's a horizontal direction. That means the reinforcement needs to placed um, uh, along along the the long side of the uh, rectangle. So from left to right. Um, if I scroll down, we have as well the lower cross reinforcement. Uh, for it's the second layer and it shows me as well the direction how the reinforcement need to be implemented and also this is design load case uh, number one okay this is the ULS design if it comes to the other designs it looks quite similar only difference at the first step is you get an additional selection or definition for your design case 
uh, here for your results as well what minimum reinforcement should be used in that case the only available load case it's the ULS design number one will be used as a minimum reinforcement and based on this your uh, uh, SLS reinforcement is going to be designed uh, as well we have here quad elements uh, about the crack uh, with control possibilities control parameters text output and graphical output same as before I leave everything on default click on OK and run through analysis good so again I had into the report right click go to reports and open the report and what we see here is again the output again the British standard information here as before and if I scroll down a little bit what you can see here for instance select the crack width at 0.3 what needs to be fulfilled for my SLS design if I go straight away to my principal reinforcement I see I get a difference as you remember as my in my ULS design if I scroll here back again I have all, around about 700 here if I go to my SLS I have already 850 square centimeter per meter as result good this brings me already to the end of this uh, uh, video I hope it was useful to give you a brief idea about how to set up the workflow uh, of a simple 2D slab and basically this workflow can also be used for a 3D system of course you need as you can imagine to set up some more information during the uh, um, creation within Sofa Plus because you get more degree of freedoms um, I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully we'll see us in one of my next videos have a good day